Hello, welcome to the wrap up of a month without a multi-tool. For the entire month, I did not use a multi-tool and I logged every single time I used my EDC during the month. And as we work through the video, I'll give you some realizations and some thoughts based upon what I actually used and what I didn't use, what I should be carrying, what I shouldn't be carrying. And at the end, we'll talk about the experiments and things I might do next as I uh, figure out where to take this. Let's dive into it. First, let's talk about our transitions during the month. For knives, I started out with the Prybrid X. You may say, but that's a pry bar. I don't really use the pry bar function of it. I don't really like it, but I did use the knife. This is an X-Acto style blade. I figured out that I don't really like X-Acto style blades in my EDC knife. Uh, something about it just feels too fragile to me and doesn't feel like a real workhorse of a blade. So I moved on quickly from that. Then we have the Gerber Pry Brid. This is the second one I carried. Even though I really don't like the pry bar on this one, I really do like the utility knife. I like the format of this thing. I like how it's held in the hand. I like how it feels. It's just a good utility knife that I enjoy carrying that doesn't look like every other utility knife on the market. So that's, that's the good thing about it. So I carried this one for a little bit before I moved on. The next one we had was the Jerry Rig Everything Utility Knife. I did like this utility knife, but as you can see, it's just a utility knife. It has metal scales. Okay, so that's something over some others. The thing I really didn't like about this knife was this push button right here. It's too easy to push. And so I found that whenever I was doing some work earlier in the month, that I was depressing this button and having the blade pull out while I was using the knife. I didn't like that. I eventually adjusted to it, but I really wish this mechanism was something different other than a simple, easy to press button. The next knife I carried was the Mass Drop Ferrum Forge Collab knife called the Buck. This is no longer manufactured. You can still find it online. I really like the action on this knife. It's really nice to flip. And I also like the, the uh, look of it. It's a little more aggressive than I normally carry, but it's not so over the top that I'm not willing to pull it out and use it in front of other people. The next knife I used was the Gerber Flat Iron. This particular knife came into my collection after seeing it online because I really like cleaver style blades. And after using it, it was really bad. I posted an entire review video on this knife. You can go and take a look at it. I'll link it up above. I eventually got it to a point to where it functions well. It flips pretty nicely for me, but it's not a great knife. It's just an okay knife that I still enjoy the look of. Next on our list, let's look at our flashlights. So I started the month with a Warrior Mini 2 Olight. I used this light for a while. The only quirk I noticed about it was whenever I was trying to pull it out of my belt holder, that I would activate this tail switch occasionally. I didn't really like that, but at the same time, it only activated when I was trying to pull it out of my belt. So that's not a big problem. Next, we have the Olight Arcfeld. This has become my daily carry flashlight for several months now when I'm not purposefully experimenting with other flashlights. It has a cool little green laser pointer, but the real attraction to me is this shape and this format. I'd be interested in hearing about what other people think in the comments about other flashlights with this type of format, because I like it. I, I think I could carry them in the future and I'm interested in trying some other brands. Next up, we have pliers. This is the first time I've used Knipix pliers, which I know have been going around in the EDC community for a while, but since I knew I needed pliers and I wasn't going to carry a multi-tool, I needed something. So the Knipix pliers, these are the five inch ones, and I liked them. They're great. I There were times that with the Leatherman, I would have had to have went and got a wrench. And in this case, I just did not need to do that. These got the grip on everything I tried to grab onto them with, with some exceptions whenever I was doing some house projects where I really did need a real socket set or something. But these were pretty great. The four inch pliers, I also carried for a period of time, most of the month. But I didn't like these pliers as much as I like the five inch, even though they're more compact. If I was going for a compact EDC, these are still great but I like the handling and the feel of these. Uh, feels like I get a little more leverage. At the same time, both of them are perfectly suitable. 
The next one is the Crescent Lufkin. This is the six foot tape measure I started carrying after someone in the comments suggested I get a better tape measure. And they gave links. I couldn't find some of them, but I decided to go back to Amazon and try some others out. I reported on this in my mid-month update, so I'm not going to cover it anymore here, but uh, it was a good upgrade. I'm continuing to carry it. The next one on my list is pens. I started the month with a Grimsmo Saga. Because I was switching things up in my EDC carrier, I didn't like how the Knipics were sitting close enough that I felt like things were going to start to rub together and I was starting to do more day-to-day -day projects. So I moved away from the Grimsmo Saga. The next pen I used was the Urban Survival Gear Bolt Action Pen. This is now Smooth Precision Pins. They now have a later version of this pen. This is the copper variant. Really enjoy this pen. I like it, but the Knipex pliers were rubbing against this one, so I decided to move on to a pen I cared a little less about. The next pen on the list that I put into my holder was the Fisher Space Pen Telescoping Pen. This is just a pen I've carried on and off for many years. I used to have problems with the clip popping off. This was the pen where I trained myself to put drips of super glue underneath the pocket clips so that they no longer popped off. And since I've done that, I've never had an issue with this pen. This is a pen I carry when I'm looking to carry something that I'm not concerned about beating up, but I also want to be able to really use it. The last item on our list is the Teal Designs MDP Pry Bars. This was the one I had at the beginning of the month, which is just polished. And then I got this anodized one about mid month. I converted over to it. I started using the anodized one and that's what I use for the rest of the month. I feel bad for it though, because I've already put it through its paces. Uh, had a number of home projects we'll talk about shortly where I was putting the herd down on these pry bars. What are we talking about here? During the month, I tracked every single use of an, e of an EDC object. This is an entire list of every time I used a piece of EDC. I won't share all this detail with you. I've got some charts and pie charts and all that good stuff coming up. At no point during the month did I carry anything that looked remotely like this. When I was adding things to my log, I added the date, I added the object, I added the function I used, and then what was I actually doing? Was I cutting down boxes or doing something else? Probably no surprises. Most of what I do is cut down boxes. I generated a list of variations and realizations. This is something that we'll talk about as we move through this. I also generated a list of variations and realizations. I'm interested in people's feedback as to where to go from here, although I do present a few ideas as to what I could be doing next. What is EDC for this purpose? I included the stuff that I can negotiate over and I can change over time. Stuff like knives and pins and pliers and flashlights and pry bars and tape measures. Type of stuff the regular everyday person would not necessarily carry. The stuff I excluded is the non-negotiable stuff. Stuff like my earphones, my phone, my wallet, my keys, my comb, my lighter, my chapstick, all of this stuff. None of that I counted and I didn't log any uses of it because it's a little pointless because I'm never giving those things up. Where we started on February 2nd was the Prybird X, the Kinepix 5-inch pliers, the purple tape measure that I showed you earlier, the Olight Warrior Mini 2, and the Grimsmo Saga. The entire month, I carried this Tale of Knives belt organizer with two clips on the back, which I love. I'm interested in trying other models. I'd love it if there were ones with more pockets and that type of thing, but this has become a daily carry item for me. During the month, I swapped a number of things. You can see it over here. We already talked through all the stuff, so I won't go back through the list. You can always pause the video and take a look if you'd like. Let's answer a really important question about this month. Was it a routine month? Heck no. I had a roof water leak. I had to cut out sheetrock on the fly. I had a window regulator, which is, I never knew that was the name of it. It's the thing that causes the window in your car door to go up and down. It's the thing that controls that ascent and descent. That went bad in my wife's car, so I had to replace it, which you can, you can see pictured here. And then here's a little picture of the snow on my roof, which is surrounding my exhaust vent for my furnace 
not a good thing. We will talk about my use patterns both with and without these one-time events occurring. So you'll see graphs that show both. Let's talk about the functions I use during the month. The knife was clearly number one, 21 uses. And in some cases I was using the knife for a long time during these uses, such as after a Costco run whenever I've got 10 boxes I need to break down, that type of thing. The second item on the list is a pen. So I used a pen for routine stuff, you know, helping kids, writing checks. I know, I know people don't write checks anymore. I occasionally have to because of doctor's offices or something or buying Girl Scout cookies, other things that people don't normally do that for anymore, but sometimes you have to. The third item on the list was the flashlight. The flashlight is a piece of essential EDC to me. I use flashlights. Well, you can see on the list, pins and flashlights are equal on my list. I will sometimes use a flashlight daily, although I did find it really interesting that I used it less times than I expected. Whenever I had done this type of efforts in the past of logging things and I had thought about it, I would have told you that I was using a flashlight every single day. And as you can see here, it was really every third or fourth day I was using my flashlight, not every single day. Next we have pry bars and screwdrivers. So I was carrying a Teal Designs MDP for the entire month. This particular pry bar also functions as a screwdriver. And so it was the primary screwdriver I also used during the month. So anytime you see screwdriver listed here, chances are it was the MDP. So after screwdriver and pry bar, which is really kind of a two-in-one tool for me, after the MDP, we move on to the pliers. So for the pliers, I was using these Knipex pliers. They were great. Every time I used them, I enjoyed it. It got the grip I needed. Unexpectedly awesome. But you can see that I only used them six times during the month. And last on the list, we have my tape measure. I guess three times would have been about my guess for how often I really used my tape measure. Because even though I like carrying a tape measure, it's not something I pull out every single day. It's something that I just like having with me because otherwise I'm scrounging around or say I'm at Home Depot or I'm at a store or something else or I just need to measure something. Not having it's a little irritating, but this is one of the items that tends not to be on my body most days. It's usually in my jacket. If we take into account removing the project's influence, the door regulator and the roof leak from this calculation, here's what we end up with. We end up with the knife still being number one with 18 uses. Secondly, we end up with the pen, which I still have to use about the same number of times because I didn't use it for projects. So I was just doing random penny things with it. Third, we had the flashlight, which I still use regularly. And I, like I said, I would tell you that I used it every day, but I really don't after logging it for an entire month. Then we have my screwdriver, which is part of the MDP in this case, I would use the screwdriver, followed by the pliers, which I have really enjoyed carrying. And then we have the tape measure at two times, and sadly, at the bottom, the pry bar function. But that Teal Designs MDP still received plenty of love due to its function as a screwdriver in my EDC. So it's interesting to see what happens whenever the projects are removed. I would say that I still would carry a knife and a pin and a flashlight and a screwdriver. And then the rest of this stuff I could just run around and get. And even the screwdriver I could run around and get. Really, if I had a knife, a pin, and a flashlight, I could do most of what I need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. And whenever I need pliers, I am often within a pretty close distance of where I need them. During the camping months, that will not be the case, but this time of year it is. Next, we have the tools used. As I've talked about before in prior videos, to me, a tool has functions. So this MDP pry bar has both a pry bar function and a screwdriver function. So the functions are the screwdrivers and the pry bar. The tool itself is the Teal Design MDP. So let's look at it from that perspective. Once you eliminate the multi-tool, you can see that I use the Jerry Rig Everything Utility Knife and the Teal Designs MDP the most. 
But this is going to be influenced by the amount of time I was carrying these things during the month. And then we have the Fisher Space Pen, the Prybrid, the Knipix Pliers, my Olight Arkfeld, the Olight Warrior Mini 2, my tape measure, my purple tape measure, and the Gerber flat iron knife. By this point in the month, I was past the projects. So the Gerber flat iron wasn't really used. And I also used it for a fairly limited time segment. That goes for a number of these things. Uh, the Prybrid is a good example of something that I used just as long as I needed to. And then eventually I abandon it because for the Jerry Rig Everything Utility Knife, because I really was done using the pry brids since I didn't need the pry bar function and it was time to move on anyway. What are some of my thoughts on new tools coming out of this effort? The Gerber flat iron was really bad from the factory, but after adjusting it, it's not a bad knife, but now there are many manufacturers who do a better quality for the same price. So even though I like this knife okay, it's not a game changer the way at one point I would have hoped. There's just too much competition now. The Knipix 4-inch pliers, they're also very good, but I prefer the 5-inch. At the same time, there was nothing I couldn't do with the 4-inch. The 4-inch were perfectly adequate. I just, I think I like the feel of the 5-inch a little bit better. Next, we have the flashlight where we have the Olight Arkfeld. I like this flashlight. I have kind of an affinity for it right now. But the thing about this flashlight is that it could be because it's just the new kit on the block in a new form factor that I've never really carried before. So maybe that's part of it. Next, we have the Ferrum Forge Buck. This particular knife, I really like. I like that it has the finger choil. I like the grip. I like how it handles. I like the jimping along the back of the blade. Very cool knife. Enjoy it, but you know, it's no longer made. So you'll have to pick it up online from some random aftermarket retailer if you want it. Next, we have something I haven't talked about during this video at this point. This is the Trayvax Contour Wallet. This is one of their slimmer, more low profile wallets, kind of minimalist design. I like this wallet. It's really nice. I still think that I like the Trayvax Ascent better, but this is a good wallet. And whenever I compare it against kind of old, old but great standbys of mine, like the Trayvax Element, which is this wallet right here, it's a good wallet and will likely stand in for the Element in the future. As for things I'm looking for thoughts on, feel free to leave comments, is other non-circular flashlights, pliers, other options, other thoughts, and multi-tools that have an easy access knife, one-handed operation, screwdriver, pry bar functionality, and pliers. I'm thinking one of my future experiments may be to just try to carry a multi-tool, although I'm not really there yet. We'll see how far down that road I get, because I know I can only carry a multi-tool. I've done it in the past, but what I really want is a multi-tool that whenever I pull it out, I just use it much like I use my other tools. Quick, easy access. The pliers are within reach right whenever you need them. You're not having to do a bunch of monkeying around and hunting for stuff and being like, oh, let me get out my Phillips screwdriver. None of that stuff. Is there a multi-tool that you've seen or you've identified that has these kind of essential functions, really easy access, or maybe two or three of them? I think the knife is the only thing that I really want to make sure I have single-handed operation of. Interested in your thoughts, leave a comment below if you have any feedback. Whenever we talk about wins and losses, I'm not going to regurgitate the things I've said in prior videos. I'll just focus on a few differences here and kind of the key things that do carry from video to video. The Knipix pliers were great. I really like the 5 inch over the 4 inch, but it, they're both really good sets of pliers that I would use in the future, and I guarantee I will use them in the future. One of the other standout things to me was the magnet in the rear end of my flashlights. Both of the flashlights that I've demonstrated here have a magnetic rear for their recharge coupling. This came in handy a number of times during the month, 
And even though this flashlight being copper is a little too heavy for the magnet to be able to sustain it easily, I was still able to kind of set it down at weird off axis locations and be able to get it to stand there without having to have another person or kind of like have it half cast the light by standing it up on its end. And, you know, it's strong enough that it does manage to handle some situations such as the off access use. For losses, this really is a carryover from prior videos. Wire cutters and strippers from my multi-tools or from other tools, real loss. I didn't realize exactly how much I would miss them until they were gone. I just don't like having to pull out my knife and cut around the sheathing and pull it off and all of that stuff. Just nice to have something that makes the job super easy to zip around the sheathing, rip it off and be moving on or cut right through the wire without having to manhandle it or do something else. Having needle nose pliers such as come on classic multi-tools where the nose is a little longer and a little thinner, that was a real miss for me. I really would like to have a longer nose on a set of Knipex pliers, but I'm a little worried that they'd get in the way at a certain point. Also, a longer screwdriver really would be nice. This is the Linus Tech Tip screwdriver, but just about any screwdriver that's just long and thin would be nice to have whenever I'm operating in some conditions. Like I was replacing that regulator on my wife's car door. That thing, there were all these little pockets and areas where I had to screw and unscrew things. And even though I love the screwdriver on the MDP, it doesn't have a whole lot of reach past the end of the MDP. And sometimes I needed more thin distance out from where it protrudes from the end of the pry bar. And so just having a nice narrow long screwdriver would have been nice, even if it was just flat headed. So ultimately, what are my observations? I used everything, but the knife was the most important tool. Whenever it comes down to it, this is the tool I use almost every day. And I use it when I do use it, often I'm using it a bunch because I'm cutting open three or four or five boxes. I'm doing something else. I'm doing some sort of food prep where I'm like, ah, I don't want to have to go and get another knife. So I just want to be able to use whatever I've got with me, those types of things. The knife really is important to my daily operation. Everything else here, I could set my life up so that I could get to this stuff easily. That leads me into my next point. I made this video on zones of access, where I say zone one should be within 30 seconds, I should have access. Zone two should be within two minutes. Zone three should be everything else. Almost all of this stuff, except for the knife, really can fall into zone two. I wouldn't want most of it in zone three, but in zone two where it's in a drawer or sitting up behind me here on my desk where I have all the random gear from over the years that I can easily bring on camera to just show for whatever purpose. All of this is within access of my desk. The junk drawer in my kitchen is easy access. The toolbox downstairs, if I'm in the garage, that's within easy access. And then I also have the center console in my car. There's so much of this stuff that I could get to pretty easily. Ultimately, the knife is the only truly critical item that I carry. What's next? I'm interested in doing a multi-tool only for a week as a follow-up to this. I'm also interested in doing like a more compact version of EDC. Can I take these tools by even smaller versions or grab smaller versions I already have and condense it down so that I can get maybe half the size and weight but still carry the stuff on me? Maybe what that really means is that I should move back to a pocket organizer for a time because this would force me to get a little more compact about what I'm carrying. So maybe that's an experiment. I'll do a pocket organizer and really reduce down what I carry, not a full-size multi-tool, carry a tiny little set of pliers, whatever it is. I, I'd have to figure that out. Another thing would be a weight-bound build, right? I've seen other YouTube videos where people are talking about weight builds where they want it to really be under a certain weight. I moved out of move keeping things in my pocket 
in part due to bulk and the other part is weight. So I could see going down this road, a weight bound build. Do I only give myself a pound, eight ounces, six ounces? I don't know. Don't know yet, but who knows? We'll see. Pocket organizer, I already mentioned. I'm not really sure where I go from here. I'm brainstorming it and I have these ideas, but I'm really interested in knowing your thoughts. So feel free to leave comments if you'd like to see specific things. Even if you haven't seen the EDC gear on my channel at this point, feel free to throw it out there. I love new EDC gear, and as long as the budget allows it, I'd be happy to pick up more EDC gear in order to make this happen. What I'm not interested in is like an Altoid can style build because that doesn't really appeal to me because it doesn't feel like something that I'm carrying on my body in my EDC. It seems like one step removed, but I would be interested in like pocket organizer builds or something else. And I do have a number of pocket organizers, including some that are quite small. So this one is only slightly bigger than my credit cards. So I could go down that road. Let me know what you think. I'd really be interested. If you made it to this point in the video, I appreciate you sticking with it. If you like this video, please like it. If you want to subscribe, I'd love that too. I appreciate all the feedback and all the comments people give me. We passed 300 subscribers recently. I really appreciate that. For small YouTube channels, it's a great thing to see and it keeps me motivated to keep going and producing videos. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks a lot for watching today and have a great one.